cut across to the 12th India Today conclave and let's cut across to the bright young things uh, of uh, Frida Pinto and Irfan Khan. <laughs> A year or so later, I was offered a short, no-budget film with that actor. I couldn't get over my luck. But at the same time, it made me really sad and it shocked me. Because it made me realize that in spite of being such a powerhouse of talent and hard work, an actor like Irfan Khan was still struggling to find a foothold in mainstream Bollywood. Why else would he accept a role in a short film with no money, with an actress fresh out of drama school? It had nothing to do with the script, I can assure you Because of you. you. <laughs> okay, okay, I, I, I take that. So it actually really gladdens me and makes me immensely hopeful that Irfan, you persevered. Because today he is the lucky charm, should we call it the awards charm that you cast in your film. Actually, you cast him because he's a phenomenal actor. How many of you have actually seen Sahib Bibi and, uh, and Gangster? How good is Irfan? He can have a round of applause for that, right? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, even though he is in almost every big international film that is set or based in India, he has recently played the villain in the Uber commercial Spider-Man, is good in almost every role he does, no matter how small it is, and even has the correct last name. He is still not given the royal treatment of an Indian superstar. Which begs the question, are we in India really not interested in nurturing real craft and creativity? Are we, or at least the majority of Indians, still preferring to ignore even when the world applauds? And is this perhaps one of the reasons that made Frida intelligently decide to stay put in the West and enjoy and maximize her moment under the sun? Because what were her options? Come back here, do the rounds, perhaps end up playing a bimbe to one of the aging superstars? No. She was clever about it. And her journey has been very different from Irfan's journey. She became an overnight superstar. And I don't mean in the sense of it took years of struggle to get that overnight success kind of way. And no, Frida, and your you know, few years of traveling the world on a TV show doesn't count as struggle. She catapulted onto the red carpet fame the instant Slumdog Millionaire was released, or even just before Slumdog was released. Was the world readier? Did an actor like Irfan pave the way for her? Or was she just smarter or perhaps prettier about the whole thing? <laughs> or did the fact... <laughs> Sorry, Irfan. As much as we love you, okay, that battle she wins. <laughs> or did the fact that she actually didn't return and steered clear of the Indian media actually help her? Let's hear from two of the most famous exports of our country, on how they have become global Indian icons without much of a helping hand from India. So I think we'll start with Frida. Um, okay. Can I just sit here? Just sit here or stand. We'd like to see you. So okay. why don't you stand right stand here with your mic. And when I get yeah. tired, I'll sit down. How about that? <laughs> um, I actually want to start by, by saying, Cole, that there are a couple of things that I have to agree with and then a couple of things that I have to disagree with. Is that okay? Okay. The thing that I have to agree with is that, yes, before me, there were many. There were, okay, a few, if not many. There was the famous Satyajit Ray, and we know that he did win an honorary Oscar. He has filmed the world of Apu till date when I go into meetings, whether it's in LA or London, they still quote, quote the world of Apu as that masterpiece of Indian cinema. So yes, he did pave the way in a way. Then you have Pandit Ravi Shankar, and he, in the world of music, I think enriched the lives of so many international musicians as well. And um, famously the Beatles, we all know that. And he took the sound, the sitar to the West, and he made it a not so alien sound. And then we, had act, we have actors like Tabu, like Irfan, who kind of paved the way in, 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 for, for, for actors like us, who dreamt of being exactly what they're doing, like dreaming of being part of a global phenomenon of an inter on an international platform. But yes, times for them were different, and times for me are very, very different. 
And that's why I have to disagree with, with you when you said, um, was I just smart to stay there and just capitalize on everything and ignore India? No. I think the, the cinema that I kind of feel my sensibilities match with I ha is happening now in India. You know, with Pan Singh Tomar, with films like Shahid, Gattu, I don't know if, you, if anyone's seen any of these films, things are changing. And I think it is about how we responsibly put the right kind of films out there for the world to see and for the world to accept. So far, we've been stereotyped, stere stereotypical characters. And I think with, in a big way, with Slumdog Millionaire, it changed all of that. It changed all of that, not to the extent that I would have loved it to have changed, but definitely, and I'm getting tired, but definitely um, to, to the extent that um, I feel like I finally had a voice. I grew up, uh, I think I should take you back to a bit of my own personal journey and my so-called struggles, which Cole just um, dismissed. Um, to, to talk, the thing is, I had a mental struggle, Cole, and I'll come down yeah, to it. To and I'll come down to it, and I'll tell you why it was a mental struggle. Um, so yeah, so growing up, I um, have to admit that I dared to dare that international dream when not much was happening on the international arena and the international platform. In fact, it was um, a very scary time to dream a dream like that because uh, a lot of Indian actors were kind of returning in a way. You know, we had the Indiana Jones Temple of the Doom film and then we had a couple more films here and there, but they were all very stereotypical characters, which for some reason, and I don't blame the Indian media, they would call it the blink and miss role and would dismiss it and almost detest it. But I continued to dream the dream and I, and I wondered if, you know, I would stand in front of the mirror and my hairbrush was my imaginary Oscar and my Emmy and my Tony and sometimes a shampoo bottle was my Grammy award and I'd wonder if that would ever change, if there was an opportunity for me to, to change all of that. And then, of course, um, things in, in terms of the cinema that I was exposed to, and this is where the struggle comes into play. Uh, through my friends, family, and teachers, I was exposed to a very world cinema kind of uh, uh, scenario growing up. So whether it was films by Wong Kar Wai or Kurosawa, some of which, which I could not relate to, which is fine, but I did always appreciate the odds that these directors, these filmmakers made those films against and promoted it to the international arena to the point that they all got accepted in world cinema. And then, of course, the very, very important topic is Indian cinema. Yes, of course I was exposed to it. Of course I grew up watching Indian films as well. It's a myth and um, I would like to take this opportunity at the Indian Today Conclave to tell everybody who thinks that I have forgotten my roots and have um, kind of forgotten where I came from to say that that is absolute rubbish. I absolutely never said that. I always said, and I still stand by it, that I cannot be blamed for having a different sensibility. Everybody has a certain sensibility. And to pick on someone who always said that I enjoyed Mirch Masala and if they ever made a remake of it, I will be going guns blazing into that audition and I will make sure I bag Smitha Patil's role. Just because I absolutely loved that film. But of course, when I grew up in the 90s, and I was born in 1984, by the time it was the 90s, the focus, and I think Irfan would agree with me here, had shifted to the big budget, the box office films, the films that were making the money, the films that were providing revenue. And then my so-called struggle really began because I realized that not only was my international dream because of the stereotype getting deflated, but also my Indian dream was getting deflated. And it led me to this point where I actually told my sister that by 25, if nothing happens, I am going to become a wedding planner because nothing else is working for me. And I have to say that because I had, honestly, I had no plan A and plan B. People have that. But my one and only dream and passion was acting and entertainment. And that was not going to happen in my, in my head. And it was, very, it was a sad moment. Theatre as well, in a way, which I kind of feel bad that we were not really exposed to as much in schools, was something that was under, is underappreciated in this country. Not the way, you know, you can, you can do a play in, in, in New York or London and you have such throngs of people just coming in there and, and enjoying what is being put on stage. So again, there was another dead end. And so finally, when I was 22, I got a casting, uh, open casting call 
um, for this film that this British filmmaker named Danny Boyle was going to make. And um, of course I walked in there knowing that it was going to be another blink and miss role, 20 minutes screen time at the most. But more important than that, I knew that it was a story that I believed in, a story and a script that I really enjoyed reading. And uh, who wanted to say no to Danny Ball at that point in time? I mean, that would be a really stupid mistake, right? Um, so I walked into that audition. I, it was six months of struggling because it was intense competition. And I, no, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, it wasn't struggle, actually. It was, uh, it was a fun, the fun part of my auditioning process was that I got to learn so much. Um, but it was intense nonetheless because I had to beat quite a few hopefuls in this country, in the US and London to the point that I started becoming obsessed with this, this character. And the obsession continued for a year after when um, in 2009 we finally you know, became the multiple Oscar winning film. And by 25, I was not a wedding planner. I had just played a Palestinian girl in Julian Schnabel's Miral. And um, I also bagged a role in Woody Allen's film, You Will Meet a Tall Dark Stranger. That's when I realized that this is where the real battle begins. Because everything that I said I did not want to do, which is fall prey to stereotypical roles, I will have to show that I can do it and not just say it. So walking into meetings in LA was a challenge because they would lay down the scripts in front of me and it was a typical Indian girl who had come to America to get married. And I turned around and said, but what about the girl who is a doctor and is not wanting to get married? What about the girl who can be a detective? What about the girl who falls in love with this, this hunk of a guy and ends up doing a rom-com with him? No, I mean, that was not completely the idea that they had for an Indian ethnic girl. And so I feel my next um, step was to play the racial ambiguity card where I felt that it is important to realize that, of, of course, I don't want to be the Queen of England. I don't look like her, and even if I tried to with makeup, I, it wouldn't help. But within my um, capacity, whether it was Middle Eastern roles, Latin American roles, or an American girl living in America, like I, or an, uh, an English girl living in England, like I had in Woody Allen's film, was the way to go for me, and was to steer as clear away as possible from stereotypical roles. And it worked. It worked for a while. It is, it is a slow process, and trust me, it is a bit depressing at times because most out of those hundred scripts that come in, it's only two or three of them that you possibly see yourself doing. And then comes the actual process of actually going and getting those roles. So I would actually like to tell you a little story uh, about my interaction with Woody Allen because most of the time I keep getting asked about, so how was it working with the eccentric Woody Allen? Um, this is actually very, an eye, was an eye-opening um, story for me. This is after Slumdog Million, and towards the end of the filming of You Will Meet a Tall Dark Stranger, I walked up to him and I said, Woody, thank you so much for making the uh, a not Indian character, even though she is of Indian origin, but not focusing on her ethnicity. And he looked at me like, why is she stating the obvious? And he looked at me like, why is she even defending herself? And he said to me, he's like, but isn't the world a much smaller place, Frida? And why would I focus on race when I have human emotions, human feelings, and human complexities to deal with? And when he said that, I went, oh, wow, finally, minds have changed and have begun to start changing. Slowly but surely, it is happening. And the way to go for me was to chase those minds and work with those like-minded people. So here I am today, um, it's still a long way from here and I think Irfan's story would be very interesting for me to learn as well because he's had to face both um, Hollywood as well as Bollywood and he will be able to, I've not, never done a Bollywood film and I'm, um, I'll come, come down to that when I'm sure someone will ask me a question so I've decided not to even talk about it. Um, but I feel like a, for me it will be very interesting to learn how it has been for you, because I've never had to face this side of the story. You know, I always talked about the cinema, that, the, the sensibility that I had, but you've had to face both sides. So for me, it will be a very interesting uh, here, uh, uh, kind of a story to listen to. And uh, I, will, I, I love interactive sessions, so I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I'm sure a lot of questions will come up. There's a lot that I want to say, but we have very limited time. Um, over to you, Irfan, and I really hope I will, I know I will learn something from you today.
told you. You want me? No, I want you to do what you want to. <laughs> you. Really, you'll do anything I tell you to. Okay, talk out. Hello. <laughs> Kita, Kita. Go. <laughs> Hello. I think Frida has covered everything. No, no. Uh, Uh, I've been asked to speak on this uh, line, India ignores till the world, world, uh, world applauds. Uh, for me, uh, it, it hasn't been like that. And forgive me, I'm not a very organized speaker. I'll, I'll just, my jumbled up thoughts, you have to do the labor to understand what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I believe it's, I, I, I don't agree with this. Why I don't agree, I'll, I'll tell you the reasons. Uh, I believe that we are, we are a very generous uh, nation. We are very uh, adaptable nations. We, we are very generous in adapting things and leaving our indigenous lifestyle, our, 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 our philosophy, our way of thinking. We are very easy. We, we leave them and we adapt. We have been doing this for centuries and uh, this marketing thing, it is a recent thing. It has just come in, into our society and so quickly we have adapted. Now we are selling women, we are selling news, we are selling culture, we are selling uh, sports, we are selling spirituality, we are selling seeking, we are selling everything and we are so quick uh, in adapting all these things. So, uh, it, the thing is, is, it was never the case that India never applauded. It always applauded. But I was the problem. The kind of work I was doing that didn't fit into the box which was there. Because film industry is an industry. There's, a, there's so much of money involved. So one aspect of the film industry is the industry where you can make money. So the kind of films I've done in Hollywood, it has changed the perception. People have, people felt great. They felt proud. I still remember I, when I went for uh, Oscars for uh, Slumdog, there was this guy uh, in the hotel and he, was, he had tears in his eyes. He told me, 30 years I've been living here in this country and I have never felt like that. I feel nice. You know, people are reacting to me differently. They are looking at me from a diff in a different way. So these are the things which has changed. But industry, industry never reacted in the sense that they never gave me the choice of work which I was trying to do. Because that's a difficult choice. I, ne I, I, I never created a kind of slot which was already there. Because the kind of work I was trying to do is difficult to fit into the box. So that was the problem. So whatever business the film are doing abroad, if that business would have affected the pocket of our producers, then it would have changed my position here. So that's why the marketing becomes so important. Unless and until my film does business here, my choices will not increase. So whatever changed, the change came from the films when the films started making money, the Indian films. So that was the real change. People think that, you know, uh, you are doing films there, so definitely here uh, uh, producers and directors are going to take you seriously. But that, that's not the case. They always respected our talent. Uh, but choices which I was making was difficult for them to fit me in. That's the thing. And uh, this is not an easy journey. Uh, I'm enjoying every bit and part of it. Uh, but I have to create my own path. And when you have to create your own path, it's a difficult task. I'm not, I'm not trying to uh, walk on a, on, on a path which has already be, been made. So... Uh, so whatever it is, if it's, uh, if it's uh, about moving a mountain, 
we will move a mountain whatever comes you know we'll enjoy this journey and uh, try to give you entertainment uh, and try to redefine entertainment as much as we could as much as we can thank you so i'm going to use the privilege of asking the first question um first to you frida um you know you talked about battling uh, and struggling with um, mental demons and actually that really um okay for whatever struggles and whatever stuff that you did before that but at 24 were you 24 when um when slum dog came out were you 23 24 yeah, I shot the film when I was 22, and yeah, yeah the film so came out when 24. I was 23. Yeah. So it's a really young age to suddenly be a global star and on that platform with no sort of rehearsal time and, uh, uh, and no sort of uh, space. I wonder whether you were really dazzled by it and whether you continue to be dazzled by it, or did you get a moment to sort of just regroup? reconnect with yourself and sort of take it in and go man this is happening to me you know right it was a bit hard actually to do that you're right because it all happened really too quick in fact the first film festival that we attended which is the toronto film festival uh the film had already there were, there were there were followers for the film already from a previous film festival so by then it was it was already stamped as this film is something different the people from this film are to watch out for and it was too hard to digest because, it, like you said, there was no rehearsal. I didn't have any filmy backgrounds. I had never won a beauty pageant, like I was going to win one anyway. But um, it was, there was nothing for me to, to fall back on and say, oh, I've had the experience of having done that, so I will be able to deal with this better. Um, none of that. So yes, I was dazzled. And yes, I was absolutely bewitched by everything that I saw in my setting. But the one thing that I have to say that I'm so very grateful for, and I know it sounds so cliched when you say this, is that I did have really a very grounded family and a very grounding group of friends who would not take any of my nonsense, if at all I threw it at them. So that helped me always come back to reality if I ever stepped out of it. And um, I, I think that's what you always hope for in your life, a very strong social support system. And remember that when something like that happens, and it's happening for the first time with many people dubbed as the fairy tale story, the next thing to also do is to strike while the iron's hot. So in order to do that, you also have to be in a headspace where everything is more realistic as opposed to, and I can do that, 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 even though you know it's not going to happen. So yes, I had to be very realistic about everything that was happening. For you, Irfan, since you have worked uh, very actively both in Bollywood and in Hollywood, and you've been to how many Oscars now? Two. Two. two only two. My God. Okay. <laughs> so two is a lot cold, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Just so I was know. kidding. <laughs> Hello. Um, do you think that there, you know, we talk about this real sense of uh, film fraternity in Hollywood, which is missing somewhat here in our industry. Do you think that that is true because you are a real insider? You know, Anil Kapoor talks about it. when you go to the Golden Globes, everyone's really rooting for each other. It's such fun. And that totally doesn't happen here. Here it is sort of, you know, life or death and you're in competition with everyone, including yourself. Yeah, there is a kind of style where the way they conduct. But the, the thing which I was trying to say, but I could conclude, the thing is we, have, we are lost in this game of marketing. We have lost to, to acknowledge our talent. And they have made it a kind of practice to use a talent and make it marketable. And they can, they can sell the talent. So they have made their awards, their cinema, you know, a kind, they, they have brought a kind of credibility to it. For an example, if, if, I, if, I, if an actor gets a nomination for an award, his market gets affected. If you are even nominated for Oscars, Lifelong, you will have this name, Oscar-nominated Freda Pinto. So that becomes a kind of, you know, we have, we are, we are creating awards just for TRPs and just for, you know, some money. So we don't, we are not really rooting for our talent. We don't have respect for our talent. We don't know what to do with it. We are just aware of our pockets and our pre procreational instincts. Otherwise, we are in slumber. We are just sleeping. These are two things we are, you know. So we need, 
we need to find our indigenous ways. Even if we are adapting things, we need to find our own voice into it and see how 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 we how it's doing good to us. Like when I was a kid, I used to wonder in this hot weather, why advocate to wear this black coat? I still don't have an answer for this. It's, it's, it's like uh, headmaster sahab aaye the wo classroom mein bol ke gaye the ki kala coat nahi pehne to danda padega britishers chale gaye abhi agar nahi pehnega coat to vakil ko dar lagta hai system ko dar lagta hai ki wo aake dobara danda na maar de so we are still we we it's like britishers have given a patent to certain people they don't care and you know so bhagwan ke bharose chal raha hai country so that's what we are losing that's what we are not being able to understand we are very talented we are unique people in this in this whole world and we are not giving enough importance to that uh, i'm going to open it up to the panel suni since you're sitting right at the top go on um, my question is to frida and to irfan both do you feel that your ethnicity has actually added to your allure uh in hollywood point in case example someone like let's say salma hayek javi bardem antonio banderas were very very successful latin and spanish speaking actors who've actually been accepted beautifully into hollywood so do you feel this is the time for indian actors to be sort of opening doors for themselves and does that necessarily add to your allure freedom you know that's a very good question because uh when i had my first meeting with my agent um it's very important to get an, an agent in hollywood or it's very very hard to get some projects and um i told i asked her how is it that you're going to help me find work you know how you can find work look at my ethnicity look at my skin color and she looked at me and she said don't try to fit in stick out and when she said that i was like okay i need to start embracing who i am and not trying to trying to change myself and fit into the hollywood concept of the hollywood actress i can be me i can be international and i can prove it so yes i don't think um they gave me an opportunity as much to to use the so called ethnicity i used it and i decided to change it i think it's very important how you present yourself as well if you if i had to do a string of uh, of films where i did play the the typical indian girl i would have dug my own grave there so i had to make that conscious decision and so you're right uh, i i hope to for a very long time not be the token ethnic girl because that is not a nice label or tag to have but i don't mind being the ethnic girl who worked in hollywood you're fun yes uh, in a way it did uh, see uh, hollywood is a big market they know how to uh, expand it and they have been doing it uh, like spain was in fashion so the actors from spain then after the china came in they're trying to see the possibilities different possibilities all the stories in hollywood now you know they they, they are uh, they want to go beyond they want to give variety to to the to the uh, to the client so india is a biggest uh, market the way it happened earlier you know we were getting uh, this uh, miss world again and again every year you know there were reasons for that <laughs> and similarly they are trying to explore different grounds different ground and uh, recently uh, life of i almost touched 100 crore here only in india so they they are looking for possibilities so yes india is in fashion right now and uh, there are chances you know there there will be lot many films which will be made in india where the story will be based in india the actors will be based in india you see the technicians which worked in um, uh, in slum dog millionaire if they would have worked only in indian cinema their talent would have never been recognized so they give you a kind of you know a platform where you can uh, show your talent 
but also it's 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 it's, it's uh, for them it's a new territory and they will explore it and there will be more lot more technicians and talent which will be which will find their way through through the, through them go for it madam jayshree yes, fanji uh, if i may request you to tell us as an artist what are the two most fascinating things about accepting a good hollywood script two most perhaps uh, you may not get in an indian script yeah. <clears throat> see the complexity of character which you don't get it here you don't get the nuances of performance you cannot challenge yourself that much no story or the way it's written or the kind of uh nuances you have to explore in yourself to portray that character you don't get that that chance and the other thing is the exposure the exposure is big we are sitting here because of that not for my talent <laughs> also for your also. talent here fan also. Also. also a minimally so very true thank you thank you so much advaita once for irfan i um i read a previous interview of yours where you spoke about the credibility of the character visibly hollywood and the indian film industry i thought that was a fascinating comment to make and i just wanted you to elaborate on that a little bit can you elaborate your question <laughs> <laughs> in terms of how the character actor is treated on say visibly a hollywood set as opposed to a set and the opportunities that you have in terms of roles written for the character actor in, as part of an ensemble on a film see when you're doing a hollywood film you don't feel like a character actor because you are an intrinsic part of the story you are a very defined cog in the whole machinery here when you are doing a character actor you are a character just a character <laughs> you you are there to support the protagonist uh crisis or his dilemmas whatever your own existence doesn't exist mm. there the character actors existence exist they are themselves has a kind of roundness to it and the definition of why they are there in the story is very precise so we misuse character actors for the for the main main lead that's why here doing a character actor is no fun you are you are you are you are bracketed as a character actor then the story doesn't come to you you are no you are not there to deal with the story for an actor there's nothing exhilarating than dealing with the story what the director why the writer has written that story what is the nucleus of the story you want to deal with that crisis and you want to bring your own take on that but there even if you are doing a character actor you can explore these points here you are just there that's the difference but surely in fun now with character actors doing main leads in films like uh, sahib bibi uh, gangster and things like that these things are changing do you feel the hope of that or uh, like is frida going to finally come in and sort of go things are changing or not oh i it's changing rapidly every day every week is changing is changing for the better the new generation of cinema goers are forcing the change and the new generation of filmmakers are bringing that change and every 15 years 20 years the industry goes kind of a transition phase because the whole generation of film goers change the whole new generation of filmmakers come so it's changing and it's changing for the better and because the audience is also exposed to the world, world cinema so they are they are looking for fresh entertainment and i i believe today's audience indian audience is so eager and we are so lucky that they're so eager you just need a good story to say and they are there because we don't have too many uh, options for entertainment 
so every friday even if they like one or two scenes they go not like hollywood where you know if the film is not good then nobody goes there in the theater but here people go it's like festivity they go they celebrate kalyani I want to ask you: Do you ever have a bad hair day? No, that's not my question. <laughs> But I actually want to know. <laughs> um, you know, Frida, you you are definitely one of our proudest exports, uh, straight from India to Hollywood. Um, being involved in an international project, um, even based in India, but humongous success. Um, you were not really wooed by Bollywood. Um, well till i think very recently now which i'm sure you'll tell us about later um not that it made any difference to you because you were uh, swept in by the likes of woody allen and star opposite james franco <laughs> it's incredible and in fact you were you went into ho- uh, uh, hollywood when you were a very intrinsic part of bollywood already you know mainstream indian cinema my question to both of you is with the kind of experience both of you have had in the west is what do you think because there are a lot of people who have tried and well it hasn't really worked for them talent not withstanding uh, from uh, our industry so what really do you think works and what really clicks what do you think the international audience or the directors the, you know are looking for which obviously you all have made such a success out of well i'm i'm going to say this for the last time <laughs> that um i never shunned bollywood i always said my sensibility is of of indian cinema is happening now and how and i'm so glad it is because i feel i can find my place now and like kalyani rightly said it i have um i i think if if i myself find it very hard to answer that question as to what are they looking for when i bagged those couple of films it was right after slum dog millionaire so in my head i thought it is because of slum dog millionaire but the year after that i bagged two big budget films and i felt okay now the hype has died so i'm guessing they want uh, an ethnic minority girl in their film and the year after that i got a chance to to play uh, an indian character in uh, a michael winterbottom film trishna which was which was received fairly okay in 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 the west but the fact that it was seen made me realize that it's going to be forever hard for us to pinpoint and say this is what works for this year it is forever going to change and we have to change with that not change who we are but change the way we think along with that and i feel for me i'm constantly reinventing myself as well if i have done something in the past i want to try something different just to see if that will work yes sometimes i'll fall flat on my face and wouldn't be something that i should have done but at least i know now so for me i think it's um something that we constantly have to have to find within ourselves and i think more than anything else the one thing i have learned through going through all those meetings um with agents and and producers is that they want to see something that is originally yours and um i try to do that as much as i can they not not go in there and just talk about india that's not what i meant but something that you can uniquely bring to the film that they have never seen anyone else do before so i guess that's the only way i can answer that question it is very difficult to put in words what they are looking for basically they're looking for a business possibility but it's not just business possibility because they treat it as they give enough importance to the creative aspect as well of this uh, you know this business of storytelling i'll give you an example i was offered a part in a series called in treatment my friend uh, was producing that uh but originally that part was written as a jew story the series was uh, about a, a psychotherapist and and his patients there were four stories so there was one story about jew but then they because namesake was uh, was accepted very well there so they were thinking why don't we use irfan so can we change this story to indian story they saw this possibility and they did it 
and the way they did it you see that uh, series is an excellent series it's a unique series so they are looking for basically for business possibility which has a kind of you know uh, where they see that you know it has a universal language they could make enough money on that and uh, you know basically that i'm really really sorry but we have run out of time so i cannot ask the audience to ask any questions but i will give you a treat if uh, frida agrees she's going to show us her best pose on the red carpet oh come on i'd rather to teach me in advance like get up ask a question no question we have no time she's going to show us how it happens since okay. she is the darling okay. is that your paparazzi right there okay hold away oh man that's like come on come on oh, frida 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 i honestly <laughs> I'd like to say that I do some really silly things on the red carpet. I've realized I talk a lot on the red carpet and people have like the funniest expressions of me. So the best thing to do is to Okay, so I'm taking away the mic and uh, you guys have to be paparazzi. So come on, call out her name, call your friend's name out, make a pose. <laughs> Okay. Uh, thanks, Priya. Thanks, Irfan. Thanks, Koyal. Can I please request Kalyani Chawla from Dior to please come up on stage and give 